sudden dismissal of a prosecutor at the Orleans Parish District Attorney's Office generated a lot of questions. In the months since, investigative reporter Mike Perlstein uncovered a sequence of documents that raised even more questions, including a shocking cell phone video. Off the top, charges have been dropped against a South Florida man. He was shot six times by police and survived. Kevin Menon was walking into court here to appear for his first case, but the Las Vegas Metro Police Sergeant was unexpectedly taken into custody on two new charges related to... Hey guys, we're just getting this new information. This is according to multiple officers whose names we're withholding because they were not authorized to speak on the record. But they tell us a CHP officer who was arrested last week on suspicion of workers' compensation fraud was the commander in charge of the fatal April 2023 Mahaney Park shootout in Roseville. Now, sources tell us that Matthew Stover, a 22-year CHP veteran, was a commander who approved this decision to serve the high-risk search warrant to an armed suspect at a busy park during spring break. Following that shooting, the commander was removed from his post and subsequently went out on workers' comp. Now we're learning, and CHP reported last week he was arrested on suspicion of workers' comp insurance fraud and booked into the Sacramento County Jail. We, of course, asked CHP to verify this was the same person. They tell us they cannot comment due to ongoing litigation. And Julie, I got a question for you. So big news for Patty McKeegan. Yes. But this comes after CHP and the Attorney General, Rob Bonta, tried to throw the case out, right? Yeah, so CHP and the Attorney General did try to throw out her wrongful death suit, right? In short, the state law says that law enforcement is not liable if someone is injured by a suspect who is resisting mm. arrest. Now, that's important because, remember, CHP was not serving an arrest warrant that day, and Eric Abril was not under arrest. Instead, they were serving a search warrant on his car and his house, but they chose to confront him at a busy park instead. And as we were first to report and the judge sort of reiterated in his ruling, we still don't know who fired the fatal shot that killed Mr. McKeegan while he and his wife Patty were just out for a walk on a nature trail. So the judge has now ruled CHP did not have immunity because Abril wasn't under arrest and may not have fired that fatal shot. CHP did make several other immunity arguments, which the judge also denied this week. But of course, he says they can try again. There's something called a summary judgment, so they can come back and try again. I can tell you, though, in the meantime, uh, Patty McEgan's attorneys, according to court records, have been struggling to get discovery. So evidence and police reports from from CHP when they do, I'm sure they are hoping, we are certainly hoping it will shed some light on those decisions that led up to this fatal shooting. Which at the end of the day is all she's been asking for and all you've been asking right. for is that clarity. I mean, a year later, I mean, one step closer, but still a lot of questions. Yeah, the McGeegans and frankly, everybody in Roseville and of Rockland course, who yeah. were impacted not only by the shooting, but then Abril's subsequent escape. Exactly. So you definitely understand the difficulty with just trying to get this shed light on, right? right? Yes, I feel their pain in trying to get right. records. For yes. sure. We know you'll track it, Julie. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Good morning and welcome to the Bad Apple Report. It's 7.30 a.m. bright and early right here at Home on the Range. Thank you so much for being here today, folks. You know, I really appreciate it. Uh, we're going to start our day out in Arkansas. That's right, where the men are men and the sheep are restless. <laughs> actually, everything's restless down there. Even the armadillos are restless. They're actually a delicacy in Arkansas. I've heard it said, Arkansans say that armadillos are like God's giving them possum on the half shell. Mm -mm -mm, good, okay. Enough stupidity here. Ringberg resigned from the sheriff's office during an investigation conducted by Arkansas State Police. He did. He resigned. Former Arkansas deputy pleads guilty to collecting over 11000 in undocumented overtime. Oh, undocumented overtime, and he resigned. Hmm, I wonder how that's going to work out for him. I wonder what his sentence is going to be, you guys. A former Carroll County deputy arrested on felony charges has pleaded guilty to tampering records and has been sentenced He's going down. That's right. Blake Ringberg was arrested in 2023. Arkansas State Police said in a statement after Ringberg's arrest that Carroll County Prosecutor Tony Rogers contacted law enforcement March 2022 requesting the deputy be investigated. Ooh, it's on. While ASP investigated, Ringberg resigned from the sheriff's office. He's out of there. ASP said he's no longer employed as a law enforcement officer in the state of Arkansas. Ooh, he's been stung. According to the court documents, ASP was asked to investigate the money missing from Carroll County's Selective Traffic Enforcement Program, still right from them. Interesting. Okay, Ringberg was found to have collected $11,622.36 in overtime from the program without documentation. 
fudging the numbers, eh, Ringy? Okay, Ringberg was arrested on a total of 26 felonies, including theft, forgery, tampering with public records, and abuse of office. October 22nd, just the other day, Ringberg pleaded guilty on three counts, including theft of property and tampering with public records. All other counts were dismissed. Hmm, don't like the sound of that. Well, what's going on? As a result of the plea, Ringberg was sentenced to four years of unsupervised probation. You gotta be freaking kidding me. Guy steals 11,000 bucks and gets unsupervised probation. As a condition of the deal, Ringberg agreed to relinquish his certification. Ah, whatever. Never seek employment in law uh, in Arkansas, whatever. He's just going to move over to Tennessee and do it. And never seek reinstatement certification in Arkansas. What a sick idiot. The system sucks. It's designed to let these guys off. And uh, that's the way I see it. And in the meantime, I'm wondering if these ads are targeting me. Okay. Plexiderm. Hmm. Is that some kind of a death mask, you guys? I don't know. Taxidermy, plexidermy, you got me. I'm from Arkansas, too. <laughs> Just a little bit. We'll talk about that some more time. The case against a Las Vegas Metro Police Sergeant takes a twist as he's actually taken into custody, facing new charges. So he will likely be spending the night in jail. Kevin Menon was walking into court here to appear for his first case, but the Las Vegas Metro Police Sergeant was unexpectedly taken into custody on two new charges related to child pornography. What's up, man? What's up, buddy? Hey, I'm the Kevin Menon pushes an officer while working on the Las Vegas Strip. Videos like this at the center of the first case against him as he's charged with 13 counts related to abuse of his power as the leader of a special unit. On Wednesday, prosecutors filed two new counts of possession of visual pornography of a person under the age of 16 after Metro Police say they found images of prepubescent girls on Menon's laptop. In this arrest report obtained by the 8 News Now investigators, detectives say Menon used search terms like Teen P and another with the word pedo. The 8 News Now investigators outside Menon's North Las Vegas home as police were back with another search warrant. His wife in tears waiting and then leaving with their dog. He matters to be presented from the grand jury. A grand jury indicted Menon earlier this month after viewing multiple videos where Menon, who's dressed in plain clothes, appears to create fake scenarios which led to stops, searches and arrests. Most of the citizens who are targeted appear to be black men. A few examples. In one case, Menon tries to hand two men fraudulent money. In another, he pretends to know this man in a sports book. And in a third, he shoulder checks a man on a pedestrian bridge. It was a setup. Menon is scheduled to appear in court for those two new charges Thursday morning. He's being held without bond. Reporting in downtown Las Vegas, Vanessa Murphy, 8 News Now. Former Indiana police officer arrested for possession of child photography. All right. North Vernon, Indiana. The Indiana State Police Department has arrested a former North Vernon police officer for possession of child photography. ISP said the investigation began in August after investigators received allegations of inappropriate conduct against North Vernon police officer Jaden Van Ostel. Okay. Over the course of of the investigation, detectives discovered Von Osdol, age 22, allegedly started inappropriately communicating with a young girl through a social media app about a month earlier. Uh-oh. Communication between Von Osdol and the girl involved. The two of them sent in naked photos to each other through the app, according to the investigators. Uh-oh, Von Osdol. Okay, Von Osdol was arrested Tuesday without incident and charged with one count of possession of child photography. He was suspended from his position at the North Vernon Police Department at the beginning of the investigation was terminated prior to his arrest. Von Osdahl is currently being held at the Jennings County Jail. Oh, Von Osdahl, you really screwed up now, buddy. Okay, on with the show. Mary and Kai, we've heard from lawmakers and residents, but now law enforcement has joined the calls for Sheraldi's resignation and they're all turning to the governor to take action. I'm 36 years in law enforcement now, and I couldn't tell you the name of a former secretary of DJS until now. 
And so, and it's not for a good reason. While other DJS leaders provided a silent source of support to local law enforcement, Maryland Sheriff Association President James DeWeese says when DJS Secretary Vincent Chiraldi started in 2023, that positive partnership ended. And we count on them to step in when someone needs to be addressed, dealt with, um, put in a facility so that they're no longer a harm to themselves or the public. And um, we just don't see that. We don't see that in my county or throughout the state. Pointing to a pattern of catch and release. And we're picking up the same individuals with no with no support from DJS. And that can only come from the top because again, 36 years in doing this, We've never, I've never experienced anything like this. Deweese now joining the growing voices, accusing Seraldi of failing to hold young offenders accountable. And in larger jurisdictions, they're experiencing 90, 100, and even higher percentages in uptick in crime and violent crime when it comes to juveniles. And that frustrates law enforcement. Frustrations put on paper this week. Following a heated meeting, the majority of Maryland sheriffs signing off on a letter to Governor Wes Moore, demanding Chiraldi's resignation. The letter, echoing calls for change, made it an online petition signed by more than 2,900 Baltimore residents and business owners. And in another letter from the Senate Republican Caucus, citing failures within DJS and questioning Chiraldi's ability to lead the department. I mean, I think people have every right to be concerned about crime. It's Responding to the mounting criticism on Friday, Chiraldi defending his policies and painting a picture of progress. I'm going to stay on this job and work as hard as I can as long as the governor is supportive of the direction we're taking. Despite more of those on the front lines. And it's disingenuous to stand up in front of a group and say that, that we've got things under control when it's blatantly obvious that it's not under control. Continuing to urge the governor to change course. I'm not quite certain why he hasn't addressed the issue with the secretary. I, I think he's a smart, a smart man and knows that, that this is not going well. Now this morning, Fox 45 sent questions to the governor's office asking for his response to the sheriff's concerns. They replied with an old statement claiming that juvenile crime is improving, but did not address the letter directly. Reporting live in Baltimore City, Rebecca Pryor, Fox 45 News. Well, here's a quick little news tidbit for you. Alabama corrections officer arrested for stealing from inmate. That's right. William Todd. Oh, Billy Todd. Look at him. That's him. It happened on Tuesday and he was charged with using his official position for personal gain. Bad Apple. Right here on the Bad Apple Report. Oh, we are banging through the headlines like you know we got to do. And we've come across some Manalapan Township officer up in New Jersey charged with stalking misconduct towards teenage girls goofball a suspended manalapan township police officer has been charged after being accused of engaging in a pattern of illegal behavior involving two teenage girls the monmouth county prosecutor announced on thursday it was a big announcement you guys kevin raditsky age 47 is charged with numerous charges including engaging in a pattern of official misconduct computer criminal activity uh endangering the welfare of a child, hindering apprehension, oh, he was on the run, impersonating a law enforcement officer, ah, while suspended from duty and stalking. What a knucklehead. Okay, an investigation began in August 2023 after information was obtained that Raditsky was sending inappropriate messages and photos to one of the victims who was 16 at the time, according to the officials. Weirdo. The investigation revealed the inappropriate conduct began during the Manalapan Township 2023 National Night Out event. Oh, it's always these cop events, an annual community outreach campaign that numerous police departments participate in nationwide. Isn't that just lovely, you guys? Predator night out for cops. They love it. Every night is, though. So, in my humble opinion. Okay. At this event, officials claim Raditsky was in full uniform. I'm sure he was fully when he allowed the 16-year-old victim to sit in his patrol car. Following this event, later that same evening and in the days following, he allegedly began sending the victim sexually explicit text messages, uh, photos via social media, despite the victim informing him of her age, official stated in the news release. What a creeper. Typical idiot cop. Investigators also said that Raditsky pulled his 
pulled over the victim while she was driving on Route 9. Oh, great. Unlawfully handcuffed her and attempted to kiss her while his dash camera and body-worn camera were turned off. This is a 47-year-old cop. Roditsky is. What a creeper. In another incident, while Roditsky was on duty, the prosecutor's office claims he parked his marked patrol car outside the 16-year-old victim's home in the middle of the night after she refused to give him her address. <laughs> The best and the brightest. That's right. Oh, that's my porky leaves. He had to go and ruin our recording. It's all right. You guys are awesome. Thanks for being here today, folks. On June 22nd of last year, Orleans Parish District Attorney Jason Williams and his office were sent this video, which appears to show one of their prosecutors, Walker McInturf, in the front seat of a car with two other people during his off hours. And I would like to At one point, the backseat passenger shooting the video refers to McInturf by his first name. Walker, you a handful. Check his wallet, dude. Baby, Walk I got a bunch of money. Let's do some. The man identified as McInturf even refers to the district attorney no, like being him. his boss. Jason Williams. Williams. I work for Jason Williams because he's a good boss. We obtained the metadata from the original video, which shows it was shot on an iPhone just before 11 at night on January 22nd of 2023. The video does not show any cocaine. It only shows McInturf discussing it, and he has never been accused of a crime related to the episode. But when we showed the clip to John Fuller, one of the city's most prominent criminal defense attorneys, he had an instant reaction. I think it's horrible. Fuller has represented several defendants prosecuted by McInturf. And I'm sorry if I get I appear a little agitated, but by the video you just saw me, he's, you just showed me, I'm sorry, he's doing anything but making this city safer making this community safer or cleaning it up. On June 5th last year, the DA's office even issued this press release praising McInturf for obtaining a conviction and five-year prison sentence for a man caught with along with a firearm. There is another part of the video that was especially disturbing to Fuller, the use of a racial slur. These n****s, they're not going to with me. They're not going to that word is very offensive to many people and still has a, a deep emotional impact on many people. Five months after the video was recorded, it was sent to the DA's office. The office took quick action. A June 29, 2023 disciplinary letter received and signed by McInturf, which we obtained through a public records request, begins with, quote, ODPA leadership has elected not to proceed with termination. The letter goes on to list three conditions McInturf must meet to keep his job. One of the conditions is redacted, but the other two are one hour of diversity slash sensitivity training and a promise to, quote, refrain from conduct that could impair public confidence in or otherwise harm the reputation of the office. But McInturf returned to prosecute cases. As one of the gatekeepers to the city, which means one of the things you're supposed to ensure is fairness, then as a district attorney, I don't know how you can unleash him in a courtroom in a majority black city. After continuing to handle cases for months, McInturf was fired this March 18th. Although no official reasons were announced at the time, McInturf's termination letter states that the reason for the firing is, quote, reports of unprofessional conduct after being previously counseled regarding the same. The DA's office declined to give additional information about the firings, nor did the office address the video that led to McInturf's earlier reprimand. While offensive, a prosecutor's use of a racial slur in private would not necessarily become an issue for either of the state's two oversight agencies, according to Loyola Law Professor Dane Cialino. Cialino, an expert in legal ethics, said a DWI arrest or potential use of an illegal substance, however, would be a concern to those agencies, which are the State Attorney Disciplinary Board and the Louisiana Bar Association. And that certainly would raise red flags for the DA's office. Uh, often, if lawyers are suspected to have substance abuse issues, they are referred to the Judges and Lawyers Assistance Program. Such referrals are confidential, and McInturf's employment records that we received don't reveal what steps, if any, were taken by the DA. 
but we did find a previous DWI arrest of McInturf in his home state of Alabama back in 2016, before he came to Louisiana to attend Loyola Law School. And that, Cialino said, is almost always reviewed by the State Bar Association, even when the charge is dismissed, which was the case with McInturf's DWI arrest. It does raise character and fitness flags with the Louisiana Supreme Court's Committee on Bar Admissions. We went to McInturf's last known address in New Orleans in an attempt to contact him. We also called two phone numbers listed for him, including one local number that goes to a voice recording in which he still refers to himself as an assistant DA. Hello, Mr. McInturf. This is Mike Perlstein, reporter with WWL Louisiana, um, working on a story about your departure from the DA's office. Please give me a call when you can. McInturf did not respond. And as a lawyer, especially a prosecutor, he has to be held to a higher standard. Mike Perlstein, WWL, Louisiana. And that's it for this batch of bad apples. It's a beautiful day. I hope it's beautiful where you're at. Fall is here, colors are out. It's awesome, I'm loving it. Leaves are falling. I've got a lot of work to do. I bet you do too. Thank you so much for being here this morning and every morning to watch the Bad Apple Report. I'll see you right back here tomorrow morning at 7.30 a.m. bright and early. Have a great day, folks.